you should just die. You're nothing. A failure. You're gross. You should just stay in the Everyone gross. This is your gross. Disgusting. Gross. Fat. Worthless. Just no. give in. Don't no. stop trying. You're stupid to think anything else. Fat. This is dangerous. If you don't want, will care. Would care. Nothing. nothing. There is no one fat that cares about you. Is there a single thing you could do right? You should just give up. Give up. No, no one will care. give up. Anxiety, bipolar disorders, mood disorders, personality disorders, psychotic disorders, depression. We've all heard these words before. Mental health is one of the most prevalent topics in society today, but is often marginalized to focus on more tangible issues. We can see gun violence, racial prejudice, and bigotry. But far too often, the only tangible and palpable result of mental illness shown to the public comes much too late. Suicide is now one of the leading causes of death among young people. And I had to find my daughter hanging. Her Nobody else will son dead. Now that he's finally listening to what she's going. He hanged himself we from his life. We were family of four. There's a big gaping hole in the family. In everything we do, there's one missing. Before dissecting issues like this any further, a definition of mental illness must take place. According to Merriam-Webster, mental illness encompasses any of the broad range of medical conditions that are marked primarily by sufficient disorganization of personality, mind, or emotions to impair normal psychological functioning and cause marked distress or disability and that are typically associated with a disruption in normal thinking, feeling, mood, behavior, interpersonal interactions, or daily functioning. Today I'm going to dive into what is perhaps the most prevalent mental illness that's out there. Depression. Depression is often viewed as overwhelming sadness and nothing more. See, depression at its core is so much more than that. When something makes you sad, that feeling passes. Depression roots itself like a disease. It creates layers of emptiness, loneliness, lack of motivation, and anger turned inward. Most everyone has a collection of things that form us into who we are. Foundational elements that we perceive to be constant. Depression has a way of taking all those constants and making them volatile or destroying them altogether. Making you feel like you're living in someone else's body. It's such a completely foreign feeling that leaves those affected, disoriented, and perplexed. Depression is so frequently associated with familiar feelings like sadness because it's such an unfamiliar concept. To give a more practical illustration of depression, let me paint a picture. Close your eyes. Imagine a completely different life. Imagine one where you feel completely alone. No friends, no family. And it's not that they don't care, it's just that they don't understand and you just don't feel like they're present. So you're totally alone. You have no motivation to do the things you usually do. Passions, interests, hobbies are gone. Imagine turning all that anger, which is the only thing you have the energy to do anymore, and turning that inward. Internalizing all this pain slowly deteriorates a person, making you unrecognizable even to yourself. This is depression. Not just sadness, not just being bummed out for a day or two. 
it's a complex, layered, dark hole that doesn't care about you or those you love or the things that you care about. With this definition of what mental health is and what depression is specifically, I think it's time to share some real world stories from those who've dealt with these problems. It's time for a demonstration of mental illness. Depression for me is best described as when the same things that you do over and over that you love doing don't make you feel the same happiness anymore. And it could be a mixture of things or it could be one thing and you just, you can't figure it out. But it makes you really sad, but you can't really talk about it because people won't understand your, how, ex how they won't understand exactly how you're feeling in that instance. And they can try to tell you a million other ways how they would handle a situation, but they really don't know because they haven't been in the situation themselves that you're talking about. <sighs> Um, for me, I noticed I was starting to get really depressed around my sophomore year, so I was 16, and I don't know what it was, I guess. I, it was a mixture of things. A huge thing was my weight, and a lot of really short girls my age, or younger, older, like, my height-wise, and that do the things that I do weigh a lot less and it's hard for me because I'm a dancer and people sometimes won't take it seriously because um, I'm fat I guess and that, that's kind of hard to take and like pictures don't look the same as if a skinny person took them sometimes and that sometimes would get to me and wearing clothes and whatnot but I feel like my depression itself is a mixture of a couple of different things that just being one part of it. A big part of it because it's taken up a lot of my life, but I feel like another part of my depression is losing a lot of friends, but there's never one reason or like a specific, this is why I lost a friend. And they wouldn't be friends that meant absolutely nothing to me. I would care about them and I would think that you know, they were somewhat of good friends and, you know, things like that. Like, I would wake up the next day and wonder if certain people were still going to be in my life. And I don't think that that's normal to go through life wondering if the people that you care about are going to be there when you wake up the next day. I went to therapy for a little bit that didn't really help and we tried anxiety medicines nothing's really helped and I, I get a lot of it is from anxiety like I'm too afraid to do things and that's probably why a lot of bad things tend to happen but I kind of go through life and how I accomplish things by setting the lowest standard possible so if something bad happens I can't get too upset about it because whenever I'm so excited about an instance and nothing is going to make me happier in the world in that time something bad always happens and usually lose a friend because of it usually can't wear an outfit because of it just a bunch of little things that like add up and become a bigger issue i feel like the best advice i could give for anyone struggling with any type of depression is to find one thing that will make you feel just a little bit better. Like for me, it's watching YouTube videos and I'll just sit and rewatch videos that I really like just to try to forget everything that's going on in my life. And it does help for a little bit and then the videos end and you realize that 
you know, you're still you, but you can get away from your problems for a little bit, which is amazing. And I feel like some things will get better. I don't want, like, not everything's going to get better, but I feel like some things will get better. And there will be times where I'm really happy, but I'm not like my label of myself would not be happy I'm content because I don't think I'm ever truly happy it's just at the time I'm not upset and I think that that's a great place that would be a great goal to set to get to Hi, I'm Tyler May. I've been asked to share some of my story and background with depression and mental health struggles, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. A good starting point for me was the sophomore year of college. I had just gotten essentially a dream job, a company that I've been wanting to work for, that I've had on my list that I was writing papers about one semester, and the next semester I got an email out of nowhere inviting me uh, to work and do contract work, and then I turned that into an internship, and so I went to San Francisco, had a great summer, but but the last day of my internship, uh, my whole team, except for like one or two people, got laid off. And so I didn't really feel like I had any future in a career-wise, because everything that I wanted to do was based around that company. Along with starting to feel hopeless in my future job opportunities and career, I started to be hypercritical on myself creatively and started to think that I really like sucked and couldn't make anything good which in turn meant that I sucked and I wasn't good. And then I went back to school and just hated the school, uh, to be honest, and the administration didn't like it. And then I started hating my classes and realizing that all these digital media classes, which was my major, I didn't enjoy. And the only classes that I did enjoy were kind of like history classes, which didn't like matter at all uh, as far as career-wise for me. And so I'm just like, what am I doing here? And so feeling hopeless at school, that coupled with a breakup, up, that coupled with walling myself off to friends and then having like huge questions and doubts with faith and just starting to believe that there was there was no hope and there was uh, no help kind of for me and that I was a unique problem. So as I went further and further down into that depressive spiral I started to just not be able to function. I would start to have like panic attacks when I would be deciding how to put clothes on for the day. I uh, it felt like a huge monolithic task to just like get ready for the day in the morning and go out and do something and talk to people. I wasn't capable of having a conversation. Um, I couldn't think of really any original thought except for just self-hatred and that led into just like not being able to uh, function with motor skills. I, I didn't have a desire to play music anymore, which has been a huge part of my life and or even listen to it. And I, would, I was still leading some music stuff at the time and I started to just not be capable of the chord structures that I was doing. And I just had a disconnect with my motor neurons and uh, it, was, it, it got really bad for a time. And so within a few weeks of the next semester, I dropped out of university. Uh, and went back home and as soon as I went home I was I was suicidal immediately and was was in that state for about two months started to lose a lot of weight uh, probably lost like 30 pounds I didn't eat my nights turned into days was probably sleeping like 12 hours a day at least and just got into this deep depressive cyclical thought and all I uh, was really thinking of was uh, hating myself and uh, suicidal ideations, which meant that everything that I was doing was just to distract myself from that. But after a little while of that, my parents kind of pushed me to get help, and so I started to get help, which didn't really help at first uh, with doctors and the medical side, uh, but then was uh, switched onto a medication after uh, being kind of prevented from an, a suicide attempt and it just uh, it, it helped a lot and I started to feel more emotion but even though I was being helped on the medical side and that was affecting my emotions and my feelings positively I still um, was thinking about suicide constantly and planning and that just was an incredibly dark time and so I had a, I had a date and a will and I had pretty much everything set and well thought out uh, but through a, a series of what I believe are, are miracles of having uh, my parents and different medication and friends involved and just two faithful friends who uh, were up late consistently praying for me and reaching out to me all the time despite me completely ignoring them for, for a few months 
and they uh, were up late one night and praying for me. And not only that, but we're like, let's let, let's not only like believe, but let's let's try real hard to reach out to them. And so I got a phone call about a couple days before my uh, planned date, and uh, that along with a John Foreman concert. It's kind of a, a larger story, but just a lot of events were set into motion that kind of helped bring me out of that dark pit. Uh, to get me to where I am now, and I am just incredibly thankful for that. A few things to note about depression is that depression doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care about how good or how bad your circumstances are. It can affect literally anybody with even the best of circumstances, and it also lies to you consistently, giving you thoughts of like, I don't matter, nobody cares, I have no friends, things won't get better, things can't get better, uh, there's no help available for me. Uh, and then depression is more than just like sadness and being sad after like someone passing away or like for a reason uh, Depression is true depression is just linked to being depressed and having really no connection uh, To any other things and just that dark feeling depression is just a dark hole that doesn't care about you And some things to keep in mind when depressed is no, you're not worthless things can definitely get better uh, you do have friends. It's not that nobody cares about you. Uh, and also there's help readily available. And there's also profound hope to be found in the future. And real quick, three things that I usually tell people who are suffering from depression and wanting to try to get out of that is one, reach out to at least like two people. Start telling people what you're feeling and what you're thinking immensely helpful. Start building up a support system that's made of deeper relationships than just surface level stuff. Uh, and just talk about what you're thinking and what you're feeling, and that's okay. Uh, second one would be just speak truth to yourself. Remind yourself of what is true and connect that with thankfulness to be like, sure I'm feeling horrible, but like look at all of these other circumstances that are set in place, like my health is taken care of, if it is, uh, like all, there's so many things to be thankful fit with. So fight your depression with gratitude. And third, uh, I think it's really important to uh, serve other people and kind of just get out of that mindset of like, I am worthless because that, that starts from the point of thinking of I a lot and you're not thinking of other people. So depression is really connected to a lot of selfishness, really, if you think about it. And so I always, like, when you're thinking about other people, it's hard to be focused on your depressed self. So go do something for somebody else, uh, reach out to people and see how they're feeling and try to help them. That's about it. I hope that this can be helpful. All right, now I get to tell my story. Uh, I've been pretty like formal so far in the video, but this is gonna be more off the cuff of my personal story of uh, mental health and depression. Thank you to the others who decided to share their story. That can be a really difficult thing to put that out there. Uh, so I really appreciate them doing that. So mine begins uh, during my junior year of high school and it was about halfway through, I was dealing with uh, a lot of little things and just some life changes that I wasn't totally prepared for and just kind of like a lot of things in life weren't going amazing for me. Um, so I felt like I just looked around and everything was just like not good. Like friends weren't totally there for me because of circumstances just was going through a breakup um siblings were gone because of people growing up and leaving so i kind of just looked around and thought like wow um nothing's <laughs> nothing's really working out for me right now uh i have my faith uh in god but you know if, if you're not super strong it's easy for that to be shaken sometimes and i wasn't that strong um and i just looked around and realized that like I don't, what do i have you know and i just started to sink so deep and i wouldn't eat uh, for days at a time i'd be exhausted i would feel no motivation to do the things i usually wanted to and it just it wasn't super bad until I got past the sadness. It started with sadness, but then I knew it was terrible when I just didn't feel anything. And I just felt like I was just in this hole. It was just so far gone down that hole. And I was just sinking. 
and I didn't want to tell anybody because I felt like there was nothing that could be done because I'd never experienced anything like this before. It was completely foreign, as I've stated. And I just, I mean, I didn't know what to do. I, I Nobody around me had ever dealt with this. I'd only heard about it, and you don't expect things to hit you until it's already happened. That's something I learned. And I didn't know who to turn to because nobody around me had any concept of what I felt. So I was lost, totally lost. And then one day I knew I had to say something and I knew I sounded crazy, but I didn't know what else to do. So I talked to my parents and that kind of started the path of recovery through um, counseling and supplements and just digging further in my faith and figuring out that I find my strength in God and not in myself. That really helped, but it was such a dark three months and it was pretty severe. And we went to the doctor and my screening results were way too high for depression at my age. And I, I know what it's like to be in that hard spot, but for people out there who are dealing with it, the biggest thing for me was to just, you have to build yourself to that point where you can tell someone because talking about it can be almost therapeutic. Even if you're not even coming to any kind of resolution, you're just voicing what's happening. And that was so important for me, but it's so hard to get to that point. It took me probably a month really to get to the point where I thought I could talk to someone about it. Because if you've never dealt with it, it feels so odd. And like something's something that shouldn't be there because it shouldn't, but it's just, and you feel like you did something wrong. Like it's your fault or something, and then you, and then and then you just don't feel anything. So that's my story. Um, things got really bad, and things went much deeper than I've explained on surface level. But that's that's the basis of it. So that's my story um, with mental health and depression. All right, so this part of the doc is a little um, unplanned because I had footage shot in my nice um, button-up shirt and my hair done and shaved, uh, shot it like a week ago. I'm editing the movie right now. And I just, something felt wrong about the third segment that I had filmed. Um, it wasn't bad, it was good. It just, and it didn't feel like I didn't mean what I was saying, because I did feel, I did feel and mean what I was saying. But the third segment is about suicide. I'll say that straight up. Um, and for a topic like that, I wanted to feel 100% genuine, and it felt like 98% genuine, because I did have stuff that I was reading, that I was like had planned, you know. And there's nothing like necessarily wrong with that. I just, I, there's stuff I want to say that I thought of that I want to be more genuine, and yeah, I look worse <laughs> than I have in the rest of the movie. I'm not wearing the nice button-up shirt, as I said. My hair's not done, I've been editing all day. Don't look great, but it's not about how I look. It's about the story and the message that I'm trying to tell. So if that bothers you that I don't look as good as I did in the rest of it, then you can just click off. You shouldn't be watching this if that's your opinion. Um, I don't look good anyway. So it's no secret that this film is extremely different from anything I've done before. Everything I've done before is a narrative film. Uh, this is a documentary and it's much more uh, relaxed in the way that it's laid out and it's much more important, I think, than anything I've done before. I know that because it's my story and it's millions of other people's stories that I am trying to tell through this film. But so far we've seen a definition of what uh, mental illness and depression is and we've seen demonstrations of people who have struggled with this. And in my opinion, this last segment is the most important one of all because it centers on the decision that people who are struggling with this are forced to make. Uh, when you're struggling with something like this, you can choose to um, find help eventually because you can't just put it off. Eventually you have to find help no matter how that is or to, to give up and 
that takes the form of suicide a lot of the time, as shown earlier in this video. Uh, I can spew out statistics all day. <laughs> I researched a lot for this video. I found a lot of statistics. I put a lot of them at the beginning of this film. And I could talk about how many people kill themselves and how it's one of the leading causes of death in this country and one of the leading causes of death for people my age or a little older, even younger. Um, and all that stuff is heartbreaking to know how many people kill themselves. It's something that's, I think, massively overlooked. Uh, but this isn't a statistics segment. This is about what the story is. And the story is that people have warning signs and we don't watch for them a lot of the time. Uh, we don't like talking about mental health. We don't like talking about depression. If someone's having a hard time, we say, sorry, I'll be thinking of you or something like that. And people who are having a hard time don't always kill themselves, but um, that can be a warning sign. And people who aren't willing to talk about it aren't willing to ask for help a lot of the time. So this segment, my message is that we need to stop asking people if they want help and to just help them and to do something for them. Because as Tyler uh, said, and I, I know some about his story is that even just one little like text or one little kind act can prevent someone from killing themselves. And we hold that power, those of us who aren't totally at risk, even just one thing can prevent that. So we need to stop acting like this is a subject we can't talk about, because we can. And if we continue to create the environment around us that mental health and depression is something that we shouldn't talk about, and it's a taboo subject, then people are gonna keep uh, suffering and people are gonna keep killing themselves. And yes, that's super, super dark, but it's also super, super true. Um, and this segment, uh, not, this isn't scripted at all. I don't know, I'm sure you can tell. Um, but I was just editing and I knew that I needed my message to mean more than just look at these statistics because that's most of what the third segment was before. It was me in my nice shirt saying, look at all these statistics of people who've killed themselves and it's more than that. It's of what we can do to prevent that. And obviously we can't prevent every suicide, that's impossible, but we can try our hardest and we can do our best. So it's time for us to stop asking and to just do and you know, we, we can ask somebody for, if, we can ask somebody if they need help or we can wake up much later and wish that we had asked them. So ask, please. All right, thanks so much to everyone who's watched this film. It's really been a labor of love. For me, this is a story that I really wanted to get out there and um, a topic that I really want people to talk about more. So please don't overlook anything I've said in this video. I'm not an expert at all, but I'm just trying to facilitate conversation, honestly. And if I can get some people to start talking about depression and mental illness and suicide more because of this video, even if it's just one or two people, then I've, you know, I've reached my goal. I've shown statistics and they're pretty staggering. But if we discover the power that we have to change that, and if we can make those statistics go down by even one, then why shouldn't we?